you look at the economic picture right now, what do you think people are missing? I think they're missing the impact of technology and I think it's being underestimated by a lot of commentators. What I mean by that is the consistent improvement in quality of goods and services is not reflected in the official data. If you think about it, the economy is really growing faster than the GDP numbers suggest because the improvement in quality has accelerated. It's always been built into the GDP numbers, but inadequately. I'd also point out on the economy that capital investment is now a lot more productive than it used to be. Uh, technology makes sure of that. Whether it's the sharing economy that brings assets into um, productive use, like say Air Airbnb, or maybe it's uh, if you have a factory that's working 24-7 with robots, or as it used to be a shift system with people. Um, so the capital stock is working much harder. All of this means that interest rates are and will stay lower than most people thought. And uh, I think they're missing this, and I think it's important for valuation of every other asset, including equities. So you're saying a lot there. There's a lot of yes. things in there, the GDP and, and valuations. Um, can you just start with valuations and tell me why you're not worried about equities dropping at the historically high valuations measured by like the CAPE ratio? Well, I would suggest that equities are not yet in anything like bubble territory. With uh, tax reform having gone through and reduced the tax rate on corporations, like it or loathe it, it does improve uh, corporate earnings. And uh, what you've got is corporate earnings and a market on about 20 times, which is a 5% earnings yield. Now, the 10-year yield, which you'd compare it with, is 250. So that's a pretty good margin for equity risk. I would regard equities in the current situation, so long as we don't expect a, a recession in the next two or three years, uh, U.S. equities are still a buy on setbacks, keep up to wait. And just to go back to the improper measures of where we are, economically speaking, what do you think, like what percentage are we missing in GDP and inflation? Where, how much are those off by? Well, I suspect inflation may be overstated by about 1% per annum, and uh, that GDP therefore may be understated by about 1% per annum. And, uh, you know, if you want to have a very general understanding of how that works, Here's a question sometimes asked of graduate students in economics. If you took a typical income, say $70,000 a year, would you rather live now or in 1900? And most people will say there's been so much inflation, 70,000 a year I'd be rich, I'll go for 1900. But then if you really think about it, you wouldn't have technology, you wouldn't have antibiotics, routine diseases that are easily cured now would kill you, life would be pretty uncomfortable, no appliances, how do you keep in contact with people? You can't travel and see the world. You know, 1900, even if you were rich, would be pretty miserable. There's an example of the very long term of the quality improvement I'm talking about. And I think that continues at a very rapid rate. So I think we're better off than the numbers say we are. And there's maybe 1% more growth and 1% less inflation than most people think.